If you're working with anything more than a really short season open tunes, you'll find the render farm useful, time saving, and it's easier to use than you think. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to a quick look at using the render farm in OpenTunes. If you're new here, my name's Darren, and I'll make weekly tutorials for OpenTunes and the occasional animation. And if that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, why not subscribe to follow along? I've been using OpenTunes for over a year without the need to look into the render farm. I knew it had one and roughly knew what it did, but for the small projects I've been working on, it wasn't something I needed, so I ignored it. But while working with my last project, that I'd broken into seven smaller scenes, I found I was making a small change in one scene, then rendering and waiting while it rendered, then making a similar change in the next scene and again rendering and waiting and so on. So after a chat with Rodney in the OpenTunes Discord channel, I decided to look into trying it out and I'm glad I did. By the way, I'll put a link to that Discord in the description below. Come and join us to chat about all things OpenTunes. So anyway, in short, the render farm basically allows you to set up rendering one or more scenes at once and you can do this on your single computer and you don't need multiple servers, which at first I thought you had to. But if you have got more than one computer on your network, you can use them all to get even more out of the farm. And this is handy in the following situations. To render more than one scene while you're not at your computer, and this was one reason why I set it up for my project. I'd make similar types of edits to multiple scenes, but I have to wait as I rendered each one. And since setting up the farm task, I now make all my edits together and then render all those scenes while I'm having my tea or doing something else. Or to render multiple scenes after changing a shared asset, like a background or a character or prop. So you could add simple placeholder assets, set up your rough timing for your animation, especially useful if you've got a soundtrack to work from, and then complete that background or asset and later render all the scenes with the completed background. And I also did this as I found the need to change the character model slightly. And these changes could be reflected for the whole project by rendering all seven scenes at once. Or to simply render a scene quicker. And surprisingly, rendering a scene longer than a minute or so was quicker through the farm than using the render option in the menu. It was still rendered in one chunk, still rendered on my local computer, gave me the same output, but came out quicker. So my workflow was to add the rough MP4 outputs from OpenTunes to my video editing software, Shotcut, to see the rough timing of the seven scenes and then I worked on one element across all seven scenes. So first I worked on the lip sync, then I worked on the movement of the body, then I added the effects like the blur to the background, and then I went back and fixed up any small parts that weren't quite right. And then after each stage, I ran a render while I was away from my computer, and the updated outputs were shown in the video software, so I could watch the whole project as though it was a single output. So how do you set it up? Well, from a standard installation, you'll see the farm room, and that's got three main areas, and the left-hand side is the tasks area, where you set up the task to perform, and today we'll just be using rendering, but you could also use cleanup. The centre section is where you see the properties of each task, and the process of running them. And on the right-hand side is where you set up if you're using multiple computers, but we'll ignore that today and just leave it on local. So all you need to do is to click the Add Render button, browse for your scene, click Add, and then you add any other scenes in the same way, by pressing Add Render, and when you've added them all, you just press the Start button. But before you click Render, if you're rendering a video file, you've got one more change to make. You'll notice the scene is broken down into chunks of 10 frames per chunk, and this will slow down the rendering. And that's because it'll generate a video file for the first 10 frames, and then save them, and then it'll generate the next 10 frames, load the already created video file from disk, merge these 10, delete the disk file, and save the 20 frames to disk, that will do the same for the next 10 frames, and so on. And it's this constant merging and disk handling that seems to slow down the render for no benefit at all. And in fact, for me, the final video file was never correct after this. There was always a problem with the file, but this could be just my setup. The speed slowdown was a main issue for me. So what you need to do is to increase this chunk size. And you do that on the Preferences dialog. So in the General tab, you can see the chunk size here is set at 10 frames per chunk. So we'll change it to a size higher than the number of frames in your scene, and a thousand or more will be fine for short animations. And don't worry, it'll reduce the chunk size if your animation is smaller, so set it as high as you like. But if you're generating an image sequence, the images don't rely on each other, so having a small chunk size is useful. 
but as the documentation states, the chunk size is relevant only when your animation is rendered as sequences of images. So we'll leave this as a high number and close that. So then we'll reload. So we'll re-add the render, add the scene, and you'll notice there's no subdivision of the frames. And if you select on the scene, you can see the options on the right. First you can see the command line that's called to run the render. You can see the status of the task and that changes while it's rendering. And down here you see the start time and completed time for the task and the duration of how long it's taken. And then you see the output folder, which is just the same you set up in the project. And finally at the bottom here, you've got the render options that you have on the standard render dialog of which frames to render, if you want the animation shrunk, if you want to use one, half or all of your CPUs, and you might want to experiment with it to see if it helps, and if you want to use the render tile feature. And then you can just hit the start button at the top left here and start the render. Okay, so that's the render completed, and you can see some stats on the right hand side here. So there was 991 total frames, and that took 332 seconds to complete. And there's the start time and the completed time. So it's really easy to set up a render task for one simple scene, but if you have more than one scene, all you need to do is hit the add render button and then browse to the other scenes and add them. You can save this list of tasks out using the save as button. And I've saved it here so that when you're ready to render again, you can just hit load and browse to the same location and then load in your setup. And because this task list runs from scenes saved on disk, you don't need to open the actual scene file in OpenTunes. So how much time did it save? Well, you can see from this table that for the longest scenes, it completed the render in less than half the time and saved around 10 minutes overall. And this doesn't count the time spent loading each scene one by one if you was rendering without the farm. So that's it. Rendering using the render farm to save you time and help your workflow. Why not give it a go and see how you get on? And as always, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, share it with friends that are working with OpenTunes, and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post again. And I'll be back next week with another video. And that's a Darren T.